is definitely, definitely going to bless somebody today. And I pray that as you hear this message, it will be you being blessed. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, Lord, we thank you for this time and for your word that is about to come. I pray that you will speak through me, Lord. Use me as your vessel to speak oracles unto your children. And may anyone who hears this message be blessed beyond their understanding. And Lord, may they not only be hearers of your word, but may we be doers of your word. And may we do what you want us to do according to the way you want us to do it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Today's message is entitled, God's mission seems impossible. Amen. God's mission seems impossible. Hallelujah. Now, um, it's, I, I was watching a movie, one of the Tom Cruise Mission Impossible series. And the movie is entitled Mission Impossible. And if in, in that movie, Tom Cruise is given a mission. And the mission looks impossible. But by the end of the movie, he has succeeded in undertaking that mission that seemed impossible. And as I was watching it, it, I, 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 it reminded me of the missions that God has given to each and every one of us. And to us, at the time when we get the mission, it seems impossible. At the time we feel that God wants us to do something, it looks unattainable. Success seems so far away. But brethren, if we understand that it is God that is giving us this mission, if we understand that it is God that has made it possible for us to have this mission, then we will be able to say that the mission is possible. To man, it is impossible. That's why we say mission seems impossible. God's mission, every mission God gives to us, it seems impossible, but to God, it is possible. And if it is God that is sending us on that mission, if it is God that is asking us to do what he is asking us to do, then it is possible in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. It is possible, it is possible, it is possible, it is possible. Hallelujah. So, the, the, the first story we read, where two, we have read two stories, one in Genesis chapter 6 from verse 9 to 20. That is the mission God gave Noah. And the other one is in Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 22. And that's the mission God gave Moses. We're going to use these two stories to learn about what God tells us to do and how he expects us to do it. And if we do what he says we should do, then there is victory, there is success, there is a breakthrough, there is miracles that will follow. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's open our Bibles to um, Genesis chapter 9 and verse 22. In uh, verse um, 2, Genesis 9. Amen. We're going to read uh, Genesis and we're going to ask uh, Genesis 6, sorry, from verse 9. And we're going to read from there to verse 22. Amen. And we're going to see what God did. So, whenever God gives you a mission, the first thing he does is he calls you to that mission. If God wants you to do something, he calls you and he tells you, this is what I want you to do. Amen. So, when we read from verse, from uh, Noah, as soon as we, we see verse 13, then God said to Moses, uh, to Noah, hallelujah, God said to Noah. That means God called Noah and said something to him. Whenever God is calling you to do anything for him, he calls you and he tells you whatever it is that he wants you to do. So this is what he told Moses uh, in Noah says, at the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence. Through them, and behold, I will destroy them to the, with the earth. So that's what God said. Then verse 14 says, so make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark, and you shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Amen. So God told, called Moses, uh, Noah 
to a mission. The mission is, I'm going to destroy my people, the, the people of this earth, and I want you to do something. And what I want you to do is to build an ark. Cover it with pitch. So you see, that was the mission God gave Noah. Amen. I'm going to destroy the earth with water. And because I'm going to destroy it with water, I want you to build an ark. Amen. I want you to build an ark. So God was telling Noah about the impending flood. So in verse 14, he says, build an ark. And then when we get to verse 19, he tells them something else. He says, and of every living thing, of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring to the ark and to keep them alive with thee. And thou shalt have a male and a female. Verse 20, of fowls after their kind, of cattle after their kind, of creeping things of the earth after their kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep thee alive. And thou, and thou shalt take thee of all the food that is eaten. So you see, the next thing God told uh, Noah was he gave him clear directions. Build an ark and bring the animals two by two into the ark. Bring food that will sustain you in the ark. Amen. So one, whenever God has a mission for you, he will call you to that mission. He will tell you the rationale or the reason for that mission. And he will give you clear directions for that mission. Amen. He will give you clear directions. So he's telling Noah to build an ark. He even gives him the dimensions and the sizes for every part of the ark. Amen. So it's the length of the ark. He gives him the length. 300 cubic feet. The breadth. The, the width shall be 50 cubits. The height shall be 30 cubits. And it shall have three floors. The lower floor, the middle floor, and the upper deck. God gave Noah clear directions on how to build the ark. On what to cover it with. It says cover the inside with pitch and cover the outside with pitch. And then after you finish building the ark, I want you to bring animals into the ark. Because once I destroy the earth, you have to save some animals to repopulate the earth. So bring them two by two. So the male, female for each animal. Bring them into the ark. Save them in the ark. So that when the flood is over, there will be. A male and a female goat, a male and a female sheep, and a male and a female cow, a male and a female bird. Everything that you get, bring in so that they will be able to repopulate the earth. Fowls of its kind, cattle of its kind, creeping things of the earth after its kind. Two of every sort shall thou keep to keep them alive. That's verse 20. Genesis Chapter 6, verse 20. Bring two, 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 two of each and every kind to keep them alive so that they will repopulate the earth. Amen. And then you bring in food that is to be eaten. See? So, you're going to bring these animals two by two, two by two, two by two into the... They need food to survive. You uh, need food you and your family need food to survive. So bring food. So don't just bring the animals and leave them there. Oh, they will scatter each other. Bring them food that they would need to survive. So God was clear in his mind what he wanted Noah to do. Amen. And when he did that, he gave him, made him a promise. But with thee, verse 18, it says, but with thee, I will establish a covenant and thou shalt come into the ark, you and your sons and their wives and their sons' wives with them. I will be with you. This is the covenant, me, God, I am making with you. 
that if you do everything I have asked you to do, then I will be with you. Bring your family, not just you. It is you, your sons, their wives, your, son, your children, and their wives. Bring them all into the ark. And everybody who goes into that ark will be free, will be safe, will be alive during this period of tragedy. Brethren, what is God calling you to do? What is God asking you to do? Is God giving you a mission? That seems impossible. But brethren, if it is God that is calling you to that mission, then God will definitely call you to that mission. And God will give you the reason for the mission. And God will give you clear directions as to how to go. And if you do it, then victory will be yours. Amen. The next story we read, was from Exodus chapter 3. So let's open our Bibles to Exodus chapter 3. And we, we see of the calling of Moses. God calls Moses by the burning bush. You know, verse 4. Then Exodus chapter 3 and verse 4. And the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside to see. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am, Lord. God is calling Moses. So when God is giving you a mission, he calls you to that mission. What is God calling you to do? Is God asking you to do something? Is God asking you to start a new business? Is God asking you to, to, to undertake a project? Is God asking you to do something in, for you, for your life, for your country, for your society? If God is calling you, then he has to tell you what that reason is. And so he tells Moses the rationale, the reason. Amen. So, verse 6, God says, I am God of your father. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. Moses hid his face. He was afraid. Then God says, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. So I've come to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land unto a land of large and a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pharisites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And therefore, behold, the cry of the children has come unto me, and I've also seen the oppression. Come now, therefore. So now God is giving him the mission. Come now, therefore. Hallelujah. Come now, therefore. Verse 10. And I will send you Unto Pharaoh, and thou and you will bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. That was the mission God was giving Moses. See, when he called Noah, he had a different mission. When he called Moses, Moses had a different mission. The, Moses, the mission of Noah was to build an ark according to specific directions. And after he has built it, he's supposed to bring animals two by two into the ark. The mission of Mo Moses is, I need you to go back to Egypt and go back to the Pharaoh and ask for my people to be set free. Amen. And I said, every time God gives you a mission, he makes you a promise for it. So God made Moses a promise. Verse 12, it says, Certainly, I will be with you, and it shall be taken unto thee, and I have sent thee. You know, that when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. So, you see, God called Moses on a mountain. He says, go to, back to Egypt, where you came from. Go and bring my people back to this mountain, and you shall serve me on this mountain. Amen. What is God asking you to do for him? What mission is God giving you for 2024? We are beginning a new year and God is asking you to do something. He's calling you to that mission. To you, it seems impossible. To you, it can't be done. To you, 
it is it is it is too big it's too cumbersome it's too it's too uh, uh, um, full of problems that you can't anticipate risks but if God is calling you to that mission then God will give you what it takes to take that mission so the same way he called Noah he gave Noah the abilities he gave Noah the skill to build a boat if Noah didn't know how to build a boat God would give him the skills and the ability to build the boat amen whatever it is God gives gave him the skill and the ability and the knowledge to build that boat he gave Moses the skill, the ability to be able to go back to Egypt and convince the Pharaoh to let my people go. You think God was crazy when he led Moses as a lone boy to end up in the palace and to grow up with the Pharaoh and for the Pharaoh to see him as a brother? And now he's back to say, let those slaves go. How is he even going to get into the, uh, the palace? If he had been raised a slave. Hallelujah. God is not crazy in selecting you for that mission that he has for you. Whatever God is asking you to do, there's a reason why he needs you to do it. There is a reason why he thinks you are the best person for this moment to do what he is asking you to do. You are the choice of God. And if God is choosing you, then he's giving you the reason why he's chosen you. He's giving you the reason for why he's sending you on that mission. He's the reason why he's sending you on that mission that seems impossible. Oh, but Barney, if God is sending you, then it is possible. So one thing God will give you is possibility. One thing God will give you is success. One thing God will give you is victory. Amen. Now let's look at what Moses. Moses started giving an excuse because to him that mission was impossible. Here was Moses who had run away from, from Egypt. And now, God, you're asking me to go back. I ran. I'm a fugitive. I committed murder. You're asking me to go back? Yes, God is asking you to do whatever you think is impossible. Amen. So the first question Moses asked God is, Behold, when I come upon the children of Israel they sh and say to them, God, your fathers has sent me to you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? See, for, for, for Moses, he couldn't get it. That God was sending him on a mission. That he himself didn't even know God's name. And he's going to go and say, God says, Who is God? What's his name? And God says, okay, I'll tell you my name. My name is I am that I am. Amen. Say to them that the I am has sent you. See, God's name is not past tense. It's not I was. That's past tense. It's not I will be. That's future tense. Hallelujah. It is present continuous. I am that I am. God is the I am God. He tells you, tell them that I am sent me to you. So the I am God is the one that is sending you on whatever mission he needs you to do for him this year. Whatever God expects of you this year, it is the I am, the present God that is asking you to take that mission. Amen. So that was the first <laughs> question God, Moses asked. Oh, he's thinking, oh, this is not possible. Amen. Then Moses says again, um, that when I go, what should I tell them? Hallelujah. And the God says, tell them, I'll bring you out of the affliction of Egypt into the land of the Canaanites. I have said to you, that's what I'm going to do. Tell the people that this is where God says he's taking you out of Egypt. He's sending you to back to your promised land. The land he promised Abraham. The land he promised Isaac. The land he promised Jacob. Your fathers. He's going to take you back to that land. And you will be able to enjoy 
the fruits of that land. Amen. Hallelujah. So people, and then Moses says, but but I but I, I can't talk. Hallelujah. I don't have the voice to talk. I'm a, st I'm a stammerer. And Moses was a stammerer. Hallelujah. Moses stuttered. He stammered. He says, I can't talk. Then God says to him, well, take your brother Aaron with you. Aaron is, 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 is a linguist. He, he knows what to say and how to say it. See, God is giving him the resources. He's giving him everything he needs. He knows Moses has the, the, a short temper. He stutters and he needed somebody who would be able to speak on his behalf and say it as clearly and distinctly as possible. So he says, I'm sending Aaron with you. Hallelujah. Then Moses says again that, but behold, they will not believe me and they will not hear my voice. So God says to him, what do you have in your hand? He says, I have a rod. He says, put it on the ground. Moses cast it on the ground and that rod became a serpent. And Moses fled from the serpent. Hey, hey, his rod has become a snake. He, Moses himself, got scared and whoa. I dropped my rod that I'm holding, my shepherds. You see, at that time, when he went to the land, he, he got to Jethro. He became a shepherd for Jethro. So he was at that time taking care of his sheep. So he had the shepherd's rod. And God says, drop it. He dropped it, and that rod became a snake. Moses took a step back. He was scared. But God said, pick it up. So Moses put forth the hand and take it by the tail. And he put it in his hand and caught it. And the, it became a rod again. Hallelujah. That they may believe. See, many of us, we are in times where we want to see before we do. If we don't see it, we, we don't believe it. But brethren, faith is the substance of the things not seen. We hope for it. But you can't see it right now. But many of us, if we don't see it, we don't believe. If we don't put your faith in the Lord, and the Lord your God will make a way where there seems to be no way. In that mission that God is calling you to, he is the one that will provide the resources. He is the one that will give you the grace. He is the one that will give you the well with us. He is the one who will give you your support. You see, hey, Moses needed support because he had the inability of speaking clearly. You know, he wants to say certain words. It doesn't come out. I went to school with, with a, 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 one of my classmates used to stutter and he stuttered real bad. You know, and, and he, he went, his problem was with the S's and the F's. Any word that starts with an S, he struggles to say that word. You know, step, and he was just to add the t to it. Forget, he would, before he struggles to get there, forget. And that was the problem Moses had. And God gave him Aaron to be with him. So if God is sending you on that mission, then God will give you the people, they give you the resources, he will give you the ability, he will give you the skills, he will make you that promise that he's going to be with you. It won't be easy because every time God sends you on a mission, the enemy doesn't want that mission to succeed. He's going to try and put impediments on, in the way. So we all know the story of, of how Moses went. And there was impediment after impediment. Even his own people didn't want to, to, to come on with him because they didn't think it was possible. Pharaoh didn't want to let the people go. I mean, you would think that if God is saying to Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go, then, of course, by the time they would get there, God would have cleared the path. He tells Moses, uh, the Pharaoh, Pharaoh, hey, God says, I should tell you, let the people go. And Pharaoh would have said, okay, go. Oh, no. It didn't come that easy. So whatever mission God is asking you to do, it won't come that easy. 
You will face obstacles. You will face problems. You will face crisis. You will face situations that you didn't plan for. That you didn't think was possible. That you didn't think would, uh, was going to make your job easier. That's why it seems impossible. But Noah built that ark and got the people and the animals in there. Moses was finally able to get the people, the Pharaoh, to release the people for the people to set off. And even after they set off, the enemy still came after them. Even when the, that, that first victory had been struck and they had been released, go, and they were going, the enemy still came after them. Even when you are doing what God wants you to do and where God wants you to go and what God is asking you to do, even in the middle of it, you're going to face obstacles. You're going to face problems. You're going to face crisis. You're going to face all kinds of things. But brethren, remember the promise of God for you. He will be you. He will see you through this. And as you read the story of Noah, when the flood came, God was with them in the boat. God sustained them throughout the period of the flood until the flood was over. God was with Moses throughout the period of going back to Egypt and convincing the Pharaoh, one problem after the other, one plague after the other, the, the lice, the locusts, the, 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 the uh, water turning into blood, uh, um, all the animals dying, the firstborns dying. God was with them through it all. And even when he, they were released and they were on the way, when the army started coming after them, God was with them in a pillar of fire oh, to separate their army from the Israelites. And then they get to the Red Sea. They are stuck. And God is still with them. He gives them the ability to cross over. They left the, the Red Sea and they find themselves in the wilderness, in the desert. But through it all, God was with them. So, brethren, as God is giving you this mission for 2024, whatever God is asking you to do, I don't know what God is asking you to do. I know what God is asking me to do. God is asking me to do what I'm doing now. He's giving me the grace. He's giving me the favor. He's giving me the ability. He's giving me the skills. He's made me that promise that if I do what he asked me to do, then it will be successful. You too, what is God asking you to do? What mission does God have for you? Can you hear God talking to you? Can you do what God wants you to do? And if you do, and if you understand that mission, get confirmation. If someone is telling you God should, says you should do this, get confirmation. Because we all know that sometimes the enemy also comes and tells us to do things that God didn't ask us to do. Let God speak to you. Go back to God and say, God, if you really are the one asking me to do this, then give me the grace. If you really, you are the one give, telling me to take this step. If you are the one asking me to go into this marriage. If you are the one asking me to go into this business. If you are the one asking me to take this job. If you are the one asking me to do this for God. If you are the one asking me to do this in the church. If you are the one asking me to do anything or go anywhere or to do whatever it is. If it is you. If it is you, confirm it and give me the resources, give me the skills, give me the ability, give me the knowledge, give me the people, the destiny helpers that will help me to achieve this. To achieve this. So Moses, God, Aaron, he got his sister Miriam, he got the Joshua's and the Caleb's and all those who helped to make the journey back to the promised land successful. Noah got his sons and his sons' sons and their wives. Oh, they all helped. In, you, think, you think Noah alone went gathering the cows and the donkeys and the cheese and the, and the chickens and the, and the guinea fowls and all those animals. He got them into the ark. You think Moses, John, Noah did it alone? No. God gave him the resources. God gave him the helpers. His sons, 
their wives, his children, and their wives. They all helped in getting everybody on board. Amen. So you too, whatever God is asking you to do, he will give you the resources. If it is God, and that's the key thing, if it is God, then he will help you. He will give you the resources. He will give you the skills. He will give you the ability. He will make you that promise that he will be with you. He will give you protection. He will keep you safe. He will be with you every step of the way. Even when, even when the enemy comes, God will still see you through. So this afternoon, as you hear my voice, I pray that the Lord is speaking to you about something he needs you to do for him or he needs to do in your family or something he needs you to undertake or something he needs you to, 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 to do. Whatever it is, if he is calling you and if he is asking you, then he will give you the skills, he will give you the ability, he will give you the knowledge, he will give you the resources, he will give you the destiny helpers that will help you to succeed. May the Lord help you. May the Lord's grace be with you. And this mission for 2024 that he has placed on your heart, may it come to pass. May you do what he has asked you to do. Because when we read in Genesis, it says, And Noah did everything God asked him to do. And Noah did everything God asked him to do. And Moses did everything God asked him to do. Do everything. God is asking you to do. And victory will be yours. It won't be only for you. But it will be for you. And for your society. It will be for you. And the entire church. It will be for you. And your family. It will be for you. It will be for you. And all those around you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord's grace be upon you. And that mission he's called you to. May you be what God wants you to be. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.